Okay, with incoming class Hall of Famer, Bob Kelly. What an honor for you, Bob, tonight. Yeah, this came out of the blue. It was just, uh, you know, was my friend of mine came up to me and said, you're not in the Hall of Famer. I can't believe it. And he gives me paperwork, and then Madison sees the paperwork and says, I want to put you in there. So they put the paperwork in, and here I am. So something must have been looking at, paperwork must have been looking good. Have you, has it sunk in yet? Are you going to be in the Hall of Fame tonight? Uh, yeah, it's, it's coming. It's com I got in there. So for those who don't know you, talk about your career, some of the highlights of your career. Uh, Five-time uh, world team champion. Four in a row, too, at one point. Four in a row, yeah, 85 to 89 with uh, five, four of the best bowlers ever bowled with Peter Flynn, Gary Carrington, Johnny Miller, and Jackie Ray and myself. Uh, and then you won again in 92, I believe, also, right? Yep, that was the fifth one in... I got one for the thumb and I walked away. I didn't want to. I didn't want to travel anymore. Go to Canada. And I just had enough of it. The World Tournament. So it just that was it. Five five rings and that was it. And your daughter Madison's done pretty well for herself too. Uh, Maddie, uh, I don't know what to say about Madison. I mean, so when she got out of junior, she struggled for two or three years, and then she started picking it up, and then she started winning more tournaments, winning more tournaments for the last two years. She just got the she got the just of the game. She's out there having fun. She's bowling with confidence and that's making her bowl a lot better. And I just it's just amazing what she's been doing the last two years. I'm so I'm so proud of my daughter. Congratulations being the twenty twenty three Hall of Fame. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate what you guys have been doing. You're trying to keep this game going. Uh, you got I've always seen you for like maybe three or four years. I mean I've seen, I've seen you at every one of Madison's tapings and I mean hopefully you guys are going for another twenty years, but uh Thanks for keeping this thing going. Thank you very much, Bob Kelly. Thank you very much. Now, Bob Kelly. The other Bob Kelly, nominated by Maddie Kelly Riva. Step forward, please. <laughs> I love this. Both left-handed, but no related. <laughs> Tonight, we honor Bob Kelly as he is inducted into the Canopin Bowling Hall of Fame. No, not that Bob Kelly. He's already a Hall of Fame member. The other Bob Kelly, the one from Stoneham, or should I say Florida, as of last month. Where? The Villages. Villages, good for you. And to answer the age-old question, no, they are not related, although they both are left-handed. Bob started his bowling career at Middies in Stoneham, a bowling alley in the basement of a local theater. He then moved down the street to Sunlight Lanes, where he also worked for a few years until he went to work for the U.S. Postal Service. He continued bowling until 1997, when a work injury, unfortunately, ended his bowling career. Bob bowls a high single of 210, bowled on TV, a high series of 481, a high five of 781, and a 14.25 for 10 strings. Bob appeared on just about every Candlepin bowling TV show you can think of. 12 appearances on the Channel 5 single show, including being the runner-up to a game named Tommy Osta in 1980. 14 appearances on the Channel 5 Candlepin doubles show with his longtime partner, Peter Flynn, another Hall of Famer. 25 total appearances on the various Channel 50 shows, 17 on Stars and Strikes, four on Stars and Strikes, doubles, and four on Candlep and Skins, as well as four appearances on the Channel 27's Big Show Bowling. Perhaps his most memorable TV appearance was on the CBA Candlep and Pro Tour in 1985, when he bowled a 210 string, including four strikes in a row. To this date, that is still the only 200 string ever bowled on a TV show. Bob was an annual participant in the NBA State Tournament. He earned two state titles over the years, men's open doubles in 1991 with Peter Flynn, mixed open doubles with his wife, Mary Ann, in 1992. Perhaps the most memorable state tournament was 1985 when he finished second in the men's teams, <coughs> the mixed teams, men's doubles, and all events. Bob competed in the inaugural men's world tournament in 1985 in Bangor, Maine. His team, John Miller, Jack Ray, Gary Cunningham, Cunnington and Peter Flynn won the title that year and proceeded to win the next three years as well. They added another title in 1992 for good measure. 
Bob was a member of the WCBC Pro Tour for many years. He amassed two titles over his years on the tour, both mixed doubles tournaments with Mary Ann. In 1983 and 1985, Bob was a long-standing member of the Friday Night Pro League, beginning with the old Sunlight Alleys in Stoneham, later on moving to Wallach's and Waltham, and then with Candlewood Lanes in North Reading, all three of which are no longer around. <clears throat> His team won many titles over the years. He had fifth high average in 82 and 83, second high average in 84 and 85, third high average in 85 and 86. Bob is originally from Stone of Mass and now resides in the villages, Florida, with his wife, Mary Ann. They have two children, Cameron, 34, who resides in L.A., and Madison Riva, 26, currently living in Brewer, Maine. You have, may have heard Madison has definitely inherited the Candlepin bowling game and is currently competing every chance she gets. Welcome. Would you like to speak first? Sure. Thank you. So a lot of people that know me know I'm a person of many words, but while I'm up here and all of you are staring at me, I don't have many. Um, especially because I just typed this in my seat because I didn't realize I had to speak. Uh, while I never had the opportunity to see my dad bowl firsthand, I've seen plenty of it, believe me. At least once a day before my parents moved, he would come in the living room where my husband and I were sitting, and with that grin on his face, he'd come up with his iPad and say, watch this. <laughs> it was either a really fast strike or a really fast strike. And let's just say they were really fast. But of course, he'd only show us the matches that he would win, which was a lot of them. My dad was a fierce competitor, and I think if his injury didn't happen back in 97, I may have had the opportunity to bowl with him. I tried to get him to bowl in a pro series with me last year, and when I asked, he didn't say no. But when I asked my mom, she laughed in my face. <laughs> so I know I have a better chance with my dad, so maybe one day. I'd like to thank the committee and the board for giving my dad this honor, and I want to give a uh, shout out to Brendan O'Dowd for helping me get the stats I needed to get my dad here. Uh, congrats to all the other nominees, especially to my other favorite Bob, Bob Whitcomb. Uh, who always says yes when I ask him to bowl with me. It's pretty cool from here on out, I'll get to say, my mixed doubles partner is in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Again, congrats, Dad. I'm so proud of you, and as we've been saying, it's been a long time coming. I won't kick you in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, where do I stop? Um, Let's start by congratulating the class of 23 and everybody previous that's been nominated and got elected into the Hall of Fame. Um, I did have backup in case I needed another vote uh, that was on the committee. He, uh, he, left me a, he left me a voicemail. He said, I asked him if uh, it was okay, he said it'd be okay if he's gonna give me his vote. He gave me an answer and here it is. You don't know whether that's curly, so he just said slightly, so. But, uh, but my, <laughs> I, my first time I ever touched a bowling ball was down at Milty's. I gave the guy my dime for the string. I picked up the ball and threw it overhand. <laughs> I threw about three balls overhand and the guy threw my ass out, so. I was I just tempted that for a while, but uh, I'm just gonna grab a, a years, the years that really meant a lot to me, that's bowling and, and uh, tournaments and whatever, but uh, my first year bowling on TV was Channel 27 in 1975, and then I uh, finally made it to Channel 5. I got on there three or four weeks, this is the first year they haven't the Yellow Pages show, which was 1980. Um, I get on there three weeks. I happen to bowl 430. Okay, okay, now I got the lead for the Yellow Pages. There's six weeks left and three weeks go by, five weeks go by, six weeks comes along and here comes this guy, Tom Olsa. And next thing you know, I'm in second place. So we, we meet later on down the road 
We both bowled very good together, and uh, he ended up making a shot and throwing a double. And he took the title, but it was an experience. I think my best year was probably 85 when we first started the uh, World Team Tournament up in uh, Maine. Up in Canada was the first year. Charlie had roll us to get the top 20 bowlers. And uh, the top 20 bowlers would take four teams and go up and bowl against the Canadians. And the first year was, uh, was what an experience. Uh, it was only, the only four teams. We go, to, we go to the meeting on Monday night and Jackie Ray puts a team in there and the guy goes, do you have any subs? We don't have any subs. We only got five guys. So you guys ain't gonna do anything. You guys are gonna be gone after the Wednesday. So they're just putting stuff on the billboard. So Tuesday we get out there, we go 24 and 0. Wednesday 22 and 2, another 24 and 0. And they're like eight points behind us. And uh, Friday night we get to bowl them. For some coincidence, we're getting to bowl the whole team, which there's 1,200 people in the bowling lane. And it was just like, what a, what an experience that was. Uh, it's just something I'll never forget. And then we ended up winning the first year, second year, third year, fourth year. We had a little dynasty going there, but uh, that was quite the experience. And then uh, I think that was the year where I had my 210 on, uh, on the Nesson show. And, um, that, that was about it, but uh, the, best, the best year of bowling I had was in 1976. Um, that's when I met my wife. <laughs> I, met, I met her at uh, Sunlight Lanes. I asked her for a date, waiting at the Chinese restaurant. Said, meet you at 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 8.30. She ain't coming. <laughs> so I see her. Again, the following weekend, and uh, I asked her out again. I says, you gonna come this time? So she ends up coming, and 47 years later, and 40 <laughs> glorious years of marriage. <laughs> that's, that's, that's an expression from one of my friends, but uh, yeah, we, have, we have two children, and, uh, and we have Cameron, who was living out in California, and, Madison, who was just taking the girls' bowling store by you know leaps and bounds, it's I am just so impressed the way she's been performing. I'm the proudest dad around. But uh, you know she started young. She you know she, she didn't quit. She kept going through it, and now she's having fun. I don't know how much time she's gonna have left before she comes down to Florida. But you know just enjoy her while she's still still around. But uh, I just want to recognize a couple of people that uh, had the fortune of uh, bowling with Jack. I bowled with him for 10 years. It was the best time of my life. Bowled with him on Friday nights. I'm sorry. Um, um, then um, Harry. Harry, we lost. We lost Jack too, too soon and Harry too soon. I met Harry up at the World Tournament. Um, we, we, we crossed paths at different doubles tournaments and we, we got up the World Tournament. We were bowling his team that one morning and uh, I said hello, we talked to each other. I says, Harry, you're my friend now, but when I get on the line, I'm gonna go out there and kick your ass. I'm like, well, that's it. But little did I know, Harry goes out and throws 440 against me and well, who's kicking whose ass now? I says, but, that's one thing I remember about Harry. Harry's always had a good, good thing to say about people. You know, he always very competitive. Every time I bowled the team, I bowled against him. We had a lot of fun, and um, yeah, yeah, you know, God, we lost him too soon. And there's some other people that I, I think right nowadays, Al Johnson. What you're doing now for bowling, it's just uh, incredible. You're in the, you're behind the scenes. You're, you're putting yourself out, you're raising money for cancer, you're giving families money for cancer, it just, I'm just, uh, you know, glad to know you, have you as a friend. You know, I've known you for all these years and what you're doing now is just unbelievable. And Paul Grant, R Craig, and Bob Lee, 
which are running this uh, YouTube bowling, which is keeping this game alive, because this game is dying big time. I mean, when I was born, there was only like 140 lanes. And now you're lucky to have 50. But they're doing their, their damnedest to keep this thing going. And, I'm, you know, they, I think I've resurrected my career because a lot of bowling shows have been coming on I haven't seen in years. So I congratulate you guys. I hope you do it for another 50 years. And uh, before I leave, I just want to say uh, the best bowling name I ever heard in my whole life was uh, West Nesta from Leicester. I mean, <laughs> that, uh, that, that got the kick out of me. But before I walk up to the sunset, anybody that knew me that when I bowled, I was famous for my, my mule kicks. <laughs> so as I leave, I'm going to give you my last, my last mule kick, and I'm going to walk into the sun. And thank you for coming tonight, and thank you my, thank my family for coming down and supporting me. Bob, before you go, I want you to know you're not the only one that threw a ball overhand. <laughs> when I was ski jumping early days, back in the late 50s, my father said, what are you doing on Saturday nights when you're ski jumping? I said, well, we were at West Point. I mean, we were at uh, Bear Mountain, New York, ski jumping. We went to West Point and bowled. It was a big ball, holes in it. Really? Next week, we're in Salisbury, Connecticut. Did you do? We went bowling. Different game. The ball was that big. And it had little tiny duck pins or candle pins or something up there. The next week, we were in Greenfield, Mass. We go to Hennessy's Bowling Room. We go in candle pins, little ball. I threw it overhand, got thrown out. <laughs> there you go. It happens. Okay, thank you and welcome into the Hall of Fame. Did I give you your pin? Yes, I did. I gave him his pin. I think I gave it to him. Uh, yeah, I gave it to him. Okay. All right. Bob Kelly, 2023 Candle Pin Hall of Fame. Show us the plaque. There you go. It's official for the man with the whistle. How's it feel, man? It's good. I mean, I can leave a little legacy behind, but uh, I know my daughter's going to leave her legacy when she leaves bowling, but uh, this feels good. Long overdue. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Paul. Bob Kelly.